Inevitably in our chemistry classes, particularly in the general chemistry classes, we'll get into classes of chemical reactions. I usually give my students five. Synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion are the five that I discuss. When they get to advanced chemistry, they then find out that I kind of lied to them a little bit, that those aren't actually the classes of reactions. Really a lot of those classes of reactions are oxidation and reduction. So you can tie this into either unit, oxidation and reduction, the activity series of metals, or into your classes of reactions unit. But it's a really dramatic reaction to look at and let students see something that they don't, don't normally think, which is that metals can also form crystals. Uh, I'll get the reaction started so you can start to see this. This is just a reaction between zinc and acidified tin 2 chloride. So the zinc you want is the mossy zinc. This tends to have a larger surface area so it gets to the floating tin sponge a little bit sooner than other forms do. Uh, most of the directions usually say to measure this out with the balance. I usually pour directly from the zinc and just make sure that I get a good coating on the bottom of the beaker. So you just want a nice thin layer of zinc on the bottom. I'm going to add just a few more pieces. And once you have a nice coating, then just pour the tin 2 chloride solution over top. When you use the tin 2 chloride, Flynn does sell this as a premixed solution. This is tin 2 chloride along with some hydrochloric acid and the recipe for the combination is included in the handout. If you use tin 2 chloride from your shelf, you'll see that this solution is very, very clear and you want to add about 200 milliliters of the solution. And you can see right away, I'll talk a little bit more about making the solution in a second, you see right away bubbles are forming. Well the initial reaction that's happening here is just the reaction of the zinc with the hydrochloric acid. Metals that are lower on the activity series and acids will produce hydrogen gas. So that's one of the single replacement reactions that we're seeing inside of this beaker right now. The other one you can probably notice, if we can get this on the close-up camera, you can probably already start to see a little bit of fuzz forming on those zinc particles. That fuzz are tin, elemental tin, crystals forming on the outside of the zinc. So we have two single replacement reactions here. I'm going to go to the chalkboard and put these reactions on the board. So the first reaction that they see right away is that the zinc plus hydrochloric acid is going to form zinc ions, chloride ions, and hydrogen gas. Now you could write this as ZnCl2. It depends if you want to do net ionic or if you want to do as a compound. It doesn't really matter for the purpose of this. These are now in solution and this is what we're seeing, the hydrogen gas that's being formed as part of the reaction. The other reaction, the one that's producing those really sparkly tin crystals, is the reaction of zinc metal with tin 2 chloride. In that reaction, again, we're going to get zinc ions, chloride ions, but we're going to get elemental tin, tin in the solid state, not bonded to anything else. So you have zinc 2 plus ions, you have some chloride ions, and you have tin as a solid. So you have two, double, two single displacement reactions happening simultaneously. If we can go back to the close-up shot, you can start to see those crystals are growing a little bit better. And you also notice that the bubbles are sort of coming out from inside of the metal. Well, we're starting to get cavities on the inside there. So because we're getting cavities on the metal, we have spaces where hydrogen gas is being formed inside or open cavities. So we start to lower the density of this. And if you let this sit long enough, when I use this, I set it up at the beginning of class. So it's running for all 45 minutes of class. And then at the end, we look at it. And I'm going to swap out to one that I've already prepared. You can see that after we've used it for about, this one's gone for, I think, about 40 minutes the sponge actually starts to levitate. The hydrogen gas starts being generated on the bottom of that solid mass of tin crystals and it actually takes it and levitates it upward. And I'm going to scoot this back just a little bit so we can see them side by side. So this is after some time you actually get a floating tin sponge. You can pull this out after it's finished reaction, reacting, neutralize it a little bit. Use gloves when you do this. Don't just stick your hand in and grab it out to show to the kids. But neutralize it and then you can actually feel it. It feels very spongy, which is unusual for a metal. But it's because that hydrogen gas is being generated inside that you get a very low density substance that then gets levitated up by all those bubbles that are forming on the bottom. 
But if you look at our first beaker, you can now start to see some of the tin projections that are being formed. It really is a beautiful thing to be able to see metal crystals grow. Now sometimes you do see this with the silver and the copper nitrate reaction. If you ever do that one, copper metal into silver nitrate, and then you have the single displacement reaction there. But that one tends to look more like moss to me, or, or mold, or the Titanic, or something like that. You don't get really nice spindly projections of the, of the crystals there. You do get that with this one. Now, if you use the tin 2 chloride that's on your shelf, I inherited a wonderfully well-organized chemical storeroom, and I'm certain that some of the chemicals there looking at the bottles are older than I am. If you have tin 2 chloride that's been sitting on your shelf for any length of time, it naturally goes to tin oxide, either tin 2 or tin 4, I'm not sure which one. But if you try to make the solution up, you get a milky white precipitate that's almost completely opaque. It will still work with that, but you need to filter it a couple of times. So if this is a demonstration you're going to use your shelf chemicals for, make sure that you do this the day before. Don't try to make this up right before class. You need to filter it sometimes two or three times before it starts to clear up a little bit. And even then, sometimes it's still a little bit translucent. The demonstration will still work. You don't get quite the nice needle projections that you get with this one. Um, the premix solution that Flynn does is from very fresh chemicals. And once in solution, it's fairly stable. And when you make your solution, you want to store it in one of the dark amber bottles to keep the UV away and minimize any oxide formation. But it really is a beautiful re oxidation reduction example you can use to introduce the activity series of metals, or one you can use to quiz your students on the activity series of metals, or when you're talking about your classes of reactions, to simultaneously single displacement reactions. I hope you find it as useful and exciting as I do.